Our next presenter is Ruth Saboni, a biology student at the University of Oregon, and her presentation is Alleviating the Molecular Symptoms, oh dear, I should have practiced this ahead of time, of Myotonic Dystrophy. Did I get that right? Excellent. Welcome, Ruth. Good afternoon. I study a disease called myotonic dystrophy for which there is currently no cure. Myotonic dystrophy affects one in 8,000 individuals, making it the most common form of adult muscular dystrophy. And it's characterized by the inability to relax muscles at will. Now, I'd like everyone to take a minute to imagine not being able to relax your muscles, the muscles in your hands, the muscles in your face, your cardiac muscles. Over time, this leads for the, muscle, the muscles to waste away, and ultimately, this results in a low quality of life for those who are affected. Now, from a molecular standpoint, myotonic dystrophy is caused by errors in something called splicing. Splicing is the answer to an age-old biological question, and that is this. Our genes encode the information to produce protein. However, we have way more different types of protein then we have genes to code for them. How is that possible? Well, the answer is that splicing allows for one gene to produce more than one type of protein. So let's think of a gene as a sentence. The fat cat. If I tell you that the word fat can be spliced, that means that there's two possible variations for that sentence, one that includes the word fat and one that does not include the word fat. This process is performed by splicing proteins, which act as the editors of our genetic sentences. Because when you apply this analogy to our genes, you can see how one gene can produce more than one type of protein, depending on what parts of the gene are taken in, left out, mixed and matched. And so it's important to keep this process working perfectly because we rely on protein variation to develop normally. Now, people with myotonic dystrophy produce this splicing editor, splicing protein, just fine. But they also produce something called a toxic RNA. I've drawn the toxic RNA right here, this long structure. And what that toxic RNA does is that it ties the splicing protein up, binds it, prevents it from being able to reach its gene of interest, and you get abnormal splicing of the gene, which means you produce the wrong type of protein. So the goal of my research is to find compounds that prevent this interaction by getting rid of that toxic RNA altogether. For example, recently I've been working with actinomycin D. And what I have found is that when you increase actinomycin D in a cell culture model for myotonic dystrophy, the more actinomycin D you add, the less and less toxic RNA you see. Meanwhile, a control RNA remains constant. Now, since making this discovery, we've found some issues with my actinomycin D. The primary one being that it also reduces levels of the splicing protein. That's a problem. So it means that it's not necessarily the best therapeutic. But we hope to use actinomycin D as a therapeutic in our quest to continue finding compounds to better alleviate this disease. Thank you. <laughs> 